NATO allies have agreed on a $43 billion military pledge for Ukraine. However, big question mark looms over Ukraine's NATO membership. In his efforts to safeguard Ukraine from any further invasion, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is pushing towards NATO membership after the end of this war. But the challenge is multifold. Membership talks cannot progress until the former Soviet state cleans up. In a major blow to Ukraine's goal, a senior official in the U.S. State Department says the alliance will request additional steps from Kyiv before it considers a timeline for Ukraine's membership. The official signaled that Ukraine will be told that at the moment the country is too corrupt to join the NATO. This position of the Western Alliance will be signed during the annual summit on the 9th of July. As per reports, United States is blocking any UK and European efforts to write an irreversible path towards Ukraine's NATO membership. In his recent interview with Time magazine this year, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, raised significant corruption in Ukraine's defense unit. He further ruled out supporting the NATOization of Ukraine. Ukraine has suffered from corruption, particularly in its armed forces, since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. As a part of curbing corruption, the Ukrainian president sacked military chiefs amid growing rift between Kyiv's government and military staff. This year, Zelensky sacked his bodyguard after foiled assassination plot. European nations remain supportive of Ukraine as it struggles to hold off Russia's forces on the Eastern Front. However, the countries are divided on how to end the war. A survey released by the European Council on Foreign Relations says that most countries are skeptical about Ukraine winning this war. The polling data shows that majority of European countries, including Italy, Greece, Spain, are against increasing the defense spending in Russia-Ukraine war. In fact, when you look at Italy, poll data states that 80% of the population is against sending any troops to Ukraine. A large number of respondents believe that the war between Russia and Ukraine will end in negotiations or talks. Matteo Droin is a visiting fellow at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. He is now joining us live from Washington, D.C. Mr. Droin, welcome to the show. It looks like it's going to take a lot for Ukraine to attain the membership of NATO. There are several caveats that the nation clear or must clear for them to join the alliance. And among them is eradicating graft and ending the war. Does it look feasible for Ukraine to join the NATO in the near future or the dream is very far from Yes, thanks for having me. Well, in fact, there is nothing really new here. So we're approaching the summit. It will be uh, next week. And the summit's period are usually periods where every country try to push uh, its advantage. So that is the case for Ukraine and for its main supporters uh, among uh, European uh, nations. But the odds of Ukraine joining uh, directly the alliance are, as you mentioned, quite distant. And first and foremost, is not really about corruption. It's the fact that Ukraine is fighting a direct war uh, with Russia on Ukraine territory. And the fact that if Ukraine joins NATO, that would mean that NATO is at war uh, with, uh, with Russia directly on Ukraine, on Ukrainian territory. And so that could raise the prospects of uh, of escalation, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So now the question is really, do we define a clear timeline, a clear path uh, for Ukraine joining NATO, which uh, is something that will happen in the future. It's not the question of if, it's the question of when, because this is already in NATO documents that the uh, Ukraine will join NATO in, in, in the future. Mm -hmm. And so it's defining that path. And there are several other roadblocks that you mentioned, and also the fact that um, reform is expected, and that is not only a NATO requirement, it's also the case for the European Union. And what is important to underline here is that uh, you mentioned several of them, but Ukraine has done a tremendous job in fighting uh, corruption, which is still a prevailing um, uh, aspect in, in the Ukrainian uh, society. But there have been tremendous efforts being made, and certainly some others will be mm -hmm. uh, necessary. But this is part of the, let's say, due diligence to uh, eventually uh, join the alliance in the future that is not so close, but is, is not, uh, is not a, a, a dream either. Mr. Droin, very quickly, 
why is it looking like the European Union or some countries in Europe are developing cold feet when it comes to Ukraine joining the NATO? Well, I think that's uh, partly because of the, the, the point that I mentioned for it. I think the main factor is fear of escalation uh, with uh, with Russia. So again, I think the, the, the issue is not should uh, Ukraine join NATO? I think most Europeans see a value in that. It's just the question on how do we make sure that we do it in an orderly fashion that doesn't um, create more risk for Europeans. All right, I've been talking to Mr. Matteo Droin, who's a visiting fellow at the Center for Strategic and International uh, Studies. Mr. Droin, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you. For all the latest news, download the We On app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.